In this lesson, we will be looking at material functions and how they can simplify your graph. Material functions are an asset type that take whole sections of material graphs and collapse them into one reusable node. They can make your main material look a lot cleaner, easier to follow, and more elegant because they take away a lot of the complex operations you have to do. Here we are where we left off, and we want to take this whole rotation operation and stick it into its own function. So I'm going to zoom out a bit, and then I'm going to select all of the nodes that I want to hide away. Then I'll hit Ctrl and C to copy them to the clipboard. Then I'm going to go back to the asset browser, and I'll rename this material because I'm going to create a new asset, which is a material function, and I'm going to call that UV scale. And I'll just click on that to open it up in the editor. Here you can see the output result node, which is where we need to plug the final result of this function to feed back out to the material that uses it. Then we will control and V on the keyboard to paste these nodes we had into the function. We don't need the texture sample node because this whole function is designed to manipulate UVs only and return the result. So plug the last add node directly into the result to feed it out. And then we need a way to take in some parts of the main material graph to use as inputs to control the rotation. And this is done with function input nodes. I've placed one down here, which is where we'll be feeding in a user-defined 2D offset for custom centering. And we need to specify the type of data that's coming in, which in this case is a 2D vector. And then we need to give this function input a name, which is what the plug will be shown as on the material function node back out in the main material graph. This one is going to be called 2D offset, and this will allow us to define a different centering offset to scale from a point other than the middle. Another thing function inputs allow us to do is to plug in a default value in case nothing is plugged in from the main material graph. In this case, I'll be using the existing 0.5 offset as a default and turn on the checkbox for use preview value as default to make sure that it gets used. Then we take the input offset value and feed it to all the places where the constant was previously being used. In this case, the initial subtract node to offset the UVs for scaling, and then the add node to put them back. Now we need another input to feed in the original UVs that we want to scale. We can copy and paste this one we have already, and just give it a new input name. In this case, I'll call it UVs. It's already the right type, so we don't need to change that, and we can use the existing texture coordinate node as the default value. Now let's plug that in to where the UVs were being plugged in before, which is this subtract node. I'm just going to do a bit of rearranging here, and then I'm going to select this offset multiply section and wrap it in a comment block by hitting the C key and giving it a little name to describe what it does. And I find it good to comment a lot of these material functions, because when I go back to them after a while, I might have forgotten what each section is doing, and it serves as help to other artists who are readers of the graph as well. So now we'll create another input, which is the value that will be the blend between the min scale and the max scale which is going to go into the alpha and the lerp node. So we'll create a default value for that of 1, and we'll plug that into the preview. And then we'll get our lerp node, bring it up where the input is, and we'll plug that into the alpha. This all needs another bit of cleanup so that we can get ready to create two more inputs for the min scale and max scale. We can copy and paste this input node rename it min scale and plug in the default value from the one we already have. And lastly we can do the same for the max scale, copy and paste the input node, rename it to max scale and plug in the default value and then replace the original plug back into the lerp. So let's save that and now we can go back to our main material and test this out. Let's get rid of the previous nodes that were there, select them all and hit delete. I'm going to create a new material function call node. It comes in blank without our asset as the function, so we have to go to the asset browser and choose the one we just made. So we'll choose UV scale, and then go back to our material and click on the white arrow to set that currently selected asset as the one we want. Then we can connect up the function, just like any other node, and feed it into our texture sample. And we seem to be having a bit of a naming issue with one of the inputs. I must have misclicked something, so let's go back inside and go to that input, and where we see the input name, we can just uh, select that and give it the original name we wanted. And last of all, there's one more thing we can fix up, and that there's no reason why these three scale inputs should be 3D vectors, 
so I'm changing them all to be scalar types. So now we've fixed that, and we are back in the main material, and we can start testing this with some custom inputs. Let's create a constant value by holding 1 and clicking down, and then we'll change its value to 0.5 and plug it into the input scale. Then we see that the texture scales down by half. And with 0.25, it's a quarter of the size, as intended. So I'll just set that back to 1, and we don't actually need this material anymore, because we've got our material function. So I go to the content browser, and I'm just going to delete that material. We'll be coming back and reusing this later on, but for now, that wraps this one up.